this quick and short presentation, I would take you through one of the best practices that I have seen for managing suppliers through contracts and penalties. Typically, when we enter in a contract with a supplier, we specify the performance levels which the supplier should provide to us. And as we all know, in the IT service management, it is called the underpinning contract, which has got the performance levels defined in it. So let's assume that we have a supplier who is providing computer services, using replacement of hardware, printers, keyboards, hard disk, etc. at the various locations of the organization. And we have ninety-seven percent target for resolving incidents. And the way we have defined ninety-seven percent is that if we were to raise an incident, and depending on the type of the customer, let's say customer type B, we want that the incident should be resolved within four hours of us assigning the incident to the supplier. and at the end of every week or at the end of every month we would actually analyze as to what has been the performance level for the supplier or for controlling the supplier it's important that we have penalties as a part of the contract so what kind of penalties do we suggest Typically, the penalty that we suggest would obviously be deduction in the total revenues or the total money that was to be paid to the supplier at the end of the month. And what should be the deduction in the total money that was being paid? If I would take a figure of ten percent, or let's say five percent, what has been seen is that. The supplier normally has built in a five to ten percent buffer in his pricing, so a five to ten percent penalty really does not affect the the supplier. So, should I make it twenty five or thirty percent? Again, the supplier is working on thin margins, and because of the competition, a penalty to the tune of twenty five to thirty percent would actually affect the supplier. And we don't want that to happen. It's not a zero-sum game. It's a win-win thing. What we suggest and we ensure is that twenty uh, percent is the optimum amount for deduction in the money to be paid to the supplier at the end of that period. So let's say if I were to pay him a hundred thousand dollars at the end of the month, I will only pay him eighty thousand dollars. The supplier gets hit, but it's not so low that he doesn't suffer a loss, and it's not so high that it affects him very badly. But there's always a but. What we also ensure is that if the supplier were able to provide ninety-seven percent performance level over the next. Three months or next four months, he could re-earn the twenty percent that was lost. So let's say if this happened in the month of January and he had, let's say, ninety-five percent performance level, and we felt that the supplier needs to be penalized for it, we deduct the twenty thousand dollars, we pay him only eighty thousand. However, in the month of Feb, March, and April, if the supplier comes back again to ninety-seven percent and ensures. That he is adhering to the laid down performance levels, we would allow him to re-earn the twenty thousand dollars or the twenty percent that was initially deducted. However, if in these three months he again has a drop in the performance, then not only does he lose the first twenty percent, but he also loses additional twenty percent. However, for the additional twenty percent, again he gets a three month period to earn it back. The first three, the first penalty. In this case, 
the NDS failed the second time. We've launched forever. This is one of the best practices that we have been suggesting and wherever possible also getting it implemented. Thank you for watching. Please be